pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda, 3.02, is community input on the 2017-2018 budget. 30 minutes is allotted for this. At this time, only people who are going to be want to speak about the coming upcoming budget should speak. We will have another public comment period after that for other items on the agenda. The public comment period is a time slot set aside on the agenda for citizens to address the Board of Education. The open meetings law does not require that citizens be allowed to participate and speak at Board of Education meetings other than public hearings, such as this budget hearing. The, the law specifies that the public has a right to attend board meetings except for executive sessions. The procedure for public comment is outlined in Board Policy 1230, Citizen Participation, and in Board Policy 2390, Board Hearing. A total of 30 minutes is set aside for public comment for the public hearing. 30 minutes is also set aside at the beginning and end of the meeting. The maximum time allowed for any one speaker is three minutes. Public comments at the beginning of the meeting are limited to items on the agenda. Persons who wish to participate in the public comment portion of the meeting must state their name and the specific topic about which they wish to speak. As speakers must limit comments to issues appropriate for public discussion, compliments or complaints about student discipline, specific student issues, or personnel must not be addressed during public comment. Interruption of board discussion is not permitted. In the interest of civility and respect for different points of view, outbursts from the audience, applause, or other types of disturbances or disruptions are not permitted. Under no circumstances will booing be tolerated. The Board of Education recognizes its responsibility to hear and respond to public comment. As stated in board policy, one, two, three, zero. The board is not able to answer questions at the meetings, but welcomes your statements. Any questions from the public should be submitted through the use of the public comment form, which may be obtained online or at the desk with the district clerk. Responses will be provided within two business days on the district's public comment responses page so that everyone may receive the information. At this time, please limit comments related to the 2017-2018 proposed school district budget to three minutes. Does anyone wish to speak on the budget? Seeing no one, we will now move on to 3.0, uh, okay, first we have 3.03, motion to close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting. Do we have a motion? Mrs. Pelton, second. Mr. Lumia, all those in discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. 4.01, public comments on agenda items. The same rules apply as before, but this time it may be a comment on any item on the agenda. Does anyone wish to speak at this time? Seeing no one, 4.02, communications announcements received by the Board of Education. Mrs. Pelton, Mr. Slowshower. I would just like to thank all of the donors that are listed on tonight's agenda. Uh, their generosity uh, is overwhelming. Uh, especially, I'd like to single out uh, two donations. One, to Brinkerhoff Elementary School 
the Earth Networks Weather Center Station, a donation from Earth Networks of $7,500. Uh, that's an enormous donation, and uh, the students there are, uh, are really going to have a good time with that. I also would like to acknowledge uh, Peter Cassidy from the Knights of Columbus in the town of East Fishkill for donating 15 wheelchairs. That would be one wheelchair for each school in the district. So thank you to both of them as well as everyone else again uh, that's listed tonight. Thank you. Mr. Galetta. Mr. Lumia. First, I'll tell a moment of silence for uh, one of our former colleagues, Michelle uh, Musanti, who was an administrator of the district. She recently passed away, so I'll tell a moment of silence. Okay. And also, Kathy Arena, who also taught in the district for many years. Congratulate all the RCK Italian Honor Society students who were inducted this past week. In addition, I'd like to uh, congratulate all the award winners uh, for the 29th annual award presentation that, that was held at Royce Ketchum High School. Uh, this particular was a 29th annual award presentation. There was uh, Awards were given there, but more importantly, uh, Jody Macho gave a scholarship. I'd also like to thank specifically Mr. George Zingone, who for the last 29 years has provided a scholarship for our students. So I'd like to thank those two people. I mean, the Lodge, the Italian Lodge, as well as uh, George Zingone. I'd also uh, like to thank all those who uh, donated food and uh, items for the senior citizen prom. Mr. Mr. Ruben ate all the food. There was none left for everybody else. <laughs> It was good. <laughs> uh, That's why I'm so tall, John. I know. I wish I could. I'm going to eat the type of food you eat so I can grow a little bit. Uh, also, I attended the policy committee. I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Felton for all the work she does. Uh, I attended the capital improvement committee along with Mr. Schleschauer and Mr. Rubin and uh, Ms. Kellen and other members of the community. And uh, I attended a softball tournament, the Melissa Bisaccia softball tournament, as well as the baseball tournament at Rick and Lombardi. Um, we have a lot, of, a lot of sports activities going on, and if you're looking for good entertainment, I would suggest you participate. Uh, go to these sports sporting events, they're exceptional. The athletes are really, really, really good. That's up for tonight. Mrs. Goodman. I had a chance to see the Prome uh, Promethean board demonstrated and I got a chance to use it um, and they're coming into my district they're already in this district um, and I have to say that I've seen a lot of technology and fads come and go but I am truly excited about the capability of the Promethean board to enrich the classroom and, and so I just wanted people to know from a teacher that this is a piece of technology that's really really educationally very very valuable it's it's also easy to learn it's elegant it's it's got a beautiful picture and i think that the district should be commended and actually i personally thank the district because had this district not done it my district wouldn't have either so thank you <laughs> mr Rubin. thank you mrs keller um, you know, very often uh, we have students that excel in, in areas outside of these, this school district and they're not recognized. And I'd like to take a moment to recognize a couple of several students who did very well in uh, some of our students that have gone to BOCES. There's a student who, sh as, they say, as BOCES says, students shine at Special Olympics skills, such as BOCES. And one of our students, Lorenzo Cortesi, uh, has excelled in that, I'm not sure, at the school but uh, kudos to him. I'd also like to uh, recognize uh, information technology. We have two students, 
Austin Harris and John Jacobs at John Jay High School. They were uh, in third place from state competition through BOCES. So kudos to them. Over the past several weeks now, I would say that I went to John Jay High School. I attended their Blue Ribbon Ceremony where our students were uh, 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 awarded, uh, given the accolades for supporting various community charities. Kudos to those kids. Uh, the Exemplary Character and Citizenship Award there, it was a wonderful thing to see hundreds of those kids get these various awards. I went uh, with Mr. Lumi to the uh, Mrs. Kellen, the Capital Improvement Committee, uh, Mr. Uh, Slowshower also, uh, attended Meet the Candidates Night, which I found interesting at RCK. Uh, yes, I ate some of the food at the Senior Senior Prom, Mr. Lumia. Uh, and it was wonderful to go there, it always is. I attended the National Honor Society induction, that was a wonderful uh, experience. Um, I would agree with you, Mr. Lumia, the, being present at the Joe DiMaggio Lodge at RCK, the, uh, the Italian Awards Ceremony was very uplifting. Those kids work hard, and kudos to the organization for supporting these kids in that endeavor. At Wappingers Junior High School, they attended the uh, College and Career Fair, and I will say what a great bunch of kids. They're great, respectful students. They, they were engaging. I had a chance to speak with them. They are just wonderful kids. I uh, attended uh, Dr. Avatel's uh, Holocaust. He's a Holocaust survivor. He was here at this school and he spoke again this year. The children were very impressed. I'm impressed with the uh, presentation that this school uh, put forth in that respect. And at Dutchess Bosies, I attended uh, uh, the Mid Hudson School Study Council meeting. Um, I attended uh, the uh, Bus Driver of the Year celebration with Wendy Travis at the at the uh, uh, bus garage, kudos to her. Uh, Dutchess County School Board meeting uh, as a BOCES rep, and uh, one of the BOCES, or one of the uh, budget presentation meetings. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Rubin attends just about everything. He does a wonderful job of giving his time and talents to the school board. Thank you very much, Mr. Rubin. Uh, I also attended the Senior Senior Prom, which was a lo whole lot of fun, actually. And uh, I think it's one you of the better... You dance, by the way. What? Yes, I don't know about you. I did. I did the Macarena. I did. The conga line. Then one of us did dance. The Barnes and Allen show? Okay. <laughs> Right, and I also um, attended the Italian uh, Honor Society inductions and the Italian Award Nights, very impressive at uh, RCK. Uh, it's wonderful to see not only the accomplishments of our students, but the great support they have within the community uh, for their foreign language endeavors. The, uh, I w went to the Oak Grove Ice Cream Social, which was a whole lot of fun. We didn't win this year, our team won last year, but it was fun. <laughs> and uh, I attended the uh, Capital Improvement Committee meeting and the Policy Committee meeting, the uh, College and Career Day at Wabinger's Junior High, the Bus Driver of the Year Award, which was given, this is for the, from the whole area, was given to one of our drivers, Wendy Travis, and I want to say, I think the school bus drivers have one of the hardest jobs in the district because not only do they have to look after the safety of the children and drive carefully in traffic and watch the children cross, but they have to be experts at classroom management, even though they're not uh, teachers, and they have, and they have to be um, they're almost child psychologists in re uh, recognizing the problems children might have because they're the first ones who see them in uh, the morning and the last ones at the end of the day. So th it's a wonderful uh, award that was given to uh, Mrs. Travis, but uh, we have many of our other drivers do a fine job too, and thank you to all of them. 
Uh, finally, uh, I was at the candidates' night, which was pulled together at the last minute. Thank you very much to Laurie Giava and the other people who, uh, who filled in at the last minute and uh, had a, held a candidates' night. And we had very uh, interesting questions and discussion with the members of the community who showed up. And I did attend uh, also the budget presentation at Oak Grove. A fine job by our administration. Yes, Mr. Lumia. I forgot to mention two things. Number one, this Thursday, there's going to be a robotics presentation by students here at Rosie and uh, Wappingers from 68. And I'd also like to read a letter that I received by one of our former students, uh, Mr. John McMahon. Uh, I think it's very important for the community to know, as well as I, I sent this to the Board of Education, but I think it's important for the community to know. In the letter I, Mr. Lumia, thank you for passing your information along to my dad. His dad used to be a former board member in order for us to reach out. Nolan, does Nolan Cartol, and I am proud John J. alumni who have started a nonprofit called the Education 845 Foundation. The objective of the foundation is to promote analytical problem solving by igniting educational and professional curiosity in high school students. And we raised over $10,000 in our first year to bring that objective to fruition. Educational 845 offers high school students the opportunity to compete for a college scholarship by creating an actionable way to improve high school experiences. We're excited to have held four workshops in our inaugural year, teaching the students to form, develop, and market, and pitch their business ideas with the help from a John Jay High School alumni and entrepreneur, a Duke business professor, and a vice president of garden and research. The ideas and engagement from the students have exceeded our expectations. Perhaps the most exciting is the upcoming final pitch. The students' teams will present their business plan to a panel of judges, with the winning team receiving a $5,000 prize. We are coming to the end of the competition and have scheduled our final pitch date for Thursday, May 18th. Nolan and I would like to invite the Board of Education to the event to learn more and experience some of the students' great ideas firsthand. We're hoping you could also provide some guidance on to the best way to invite the board to the event wherever they craft any communication necessary. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the program, I would be happy to set up a call and meet for a cup of coffee and so forth. But anyway, May 28th, I think it's important for the community to go there. And uh, I'd like to thank both of these two students for such a, such a fantastic idea. And our students are gonna win a $5,000 prize. That's quite, a, quite an accomplishment. So thank you to Mr. Chaplin Mann and Mr. Nolan Corrath. May 28th. 18th? 18th? Oh, it's the 18th. Oh, so I'm sorry, it is. I'm sorry, it's Thursday, May 18th. We have a board meeting. Yikes. Why ain't coming to the board meeting? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to this, this presentation, so I'll let you know ahead of time. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. 5.01 Superintendent's Report. Good evening, Madam President, Board of Education. Um, I'd like to begin with just pointing out that the budget newsletter most members of the Wappinger Central School District community should be receiving it today in their homes and we're mandated to actually report out what is called the um, Wappinger Central School District budget notice. So the budget notice is what's mandated to go out in every school district. We're required by law, um, but Wappingers takes it an extra step um, for years, it's it's part of who we are, and we create an entire newsletter and highlight the district and all the things that we're doing, and we attach the budget notice to our newsletter. We're very pleased with our newsletter that went out. We highlighted all of our schools, many of our students, and all of our valedictorians and salutatorians um, for all three high schools. Orchard View Alternative High School, John Jay Senior High School, and Roy C. Ketchum High School. So there's a lot in this newsletter, and um, I encourage everyone to take the time to read through the newsletter and see the great things that are happening in our school district. I'd like to highlight page um, I had it open, and then Mr. Slowshaw just 
took back his budget. He was like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um, well, there's a page here that talks about why do you love your teachers? Oh, yeah. So what we did was with this budget newsletter, we had highlighted quotes from students from different schools, from all schools in the district. And the reason why I'm highlighting page 15 is because it's Teacher Appreciation Week. So I'd like to take this opportunity, and especially for the teachers that are present in the meeting, thank you very much for your commitment and your dedication to the Wappinger Central School District and also the commitment that you have for our students. Um, we say over and over again, great things happen in Wappingers. Many of our administrators who come from other school districts will say there's so much that goes on in this school district in comparison to others. So that is because of you. We're very thankful. I see some of my colleagues that are teachers sitting in the audience and I just wanna say thank you and hopefully that this goes out to everyone. We're very proud of our Wappinger Central um, School District teachers. Thank you. <laughs> With that said, um, I want to remind the seniors that are here um, two things. Usually I just tell you this one thing, but I'll save that for, for last. But if you haven't, register to vote we encourage you to register to vote um, those of you who are of age now and are able to vote so exercise your right to vote you are an american citizen in addition to that i see many high school students here today and i know why you're here and it's part of your class but um, you're very close to graduation and some of you sitting in the audience i know you personally i've seen you at the schools but overall, I want you to make sure that you have the best experience, what's left of your high school career, what's left of your public school career as a student is almost ending. Make it the best, stay safe, um, take advantage of all the events, programs, and activities from here till June, and everyone sitting here on this stage will be shaking your hand and congratulating you on your graduation day, the, the, um, your, during your ceremony. So thank you again, um, and do the right thing. Lastly, um, we have a community presentation at John Jay Senior High School. We don't ever get a great turnout, but we're still happy to be out in the community and, and, and being present to provide a budget presentation and answer questions even if it's to one member in the community asking questions, wanting to know more about the budget and the proposed budget for the 2017-18 school year. I think I covered all four of my points. And that's Wednesday, I'm sorry, I apologize, May 10th. May 10th, Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Mr. Lumia. I think it's also important in one of the presentation uh, uh, our superintendent gave the presentations told in Spanish. So I think for the people in the Spanish community, I think it's I think it's very wise to listen to his presentation. But it was, it was exceptional. So thank you for doing that. The thank presentations you. are available on the website if you miss them in both English and Spanish. Just one more thing about the newsletter. I really want to say thank you to Ms. Watkins, who really worked hard on the newsletter, along with Ms. Pedro. And I was right there with them, but those two really put a lot of time and effort. And um, just to all of the administrators as well that helped out with some of um, writing some of the articles, we wanted to ensure that all 15 of our schools were highlighted. And we looked at the past budget newsletters, and it's no criticism. It was just that not all of the schools have been highlighted in the past, and every school was highlighted in this budget newsletter, which we're very proud of. So once again, thank you, Ms. Watkins. Thank you, Ms. Pedro, um, for all of your efforts. But um, a lot went into this, and you can see the final product. It paid off. Thank you. Five point zero two preliminary presentation on the code of conduct. So while Mr. Lokima comes up to the mic, <laughs> um, I just want to share with the Board of Education 
that this school year we've decided to add one additional presentation. It provides the board the opportunity to ask questions. Um, if there are additional questions and we don't get to them today, please make sure you write them down and um, it will be, um, they will be addressed. But nevertheless, this is an additional presentation to what we typically have done in the past so that we can provide you the opportunity to really review the document, see the revised changes, and um, continue to work through creating a code of conduct that is aligned to our mission statement and core values. Ms. Lokima. Thank you, Superintendent Carrion. Good evening, members of the Board of Education. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to start off the discussions about the 2017-18 draft code of conduct. Uh, and I want to just give you a quick overview as to uh, where, we, where we are in the process. Uh, you received a, a copy of the review in the, in the latest uh, weekly memo review. Um, but just want to let you know that, I, that this, the process for, this, for creating the draft 2017-18 code of conduct began with me revisiting the August 15th board meeting where we talked about the, uh, where, where the last, uh, the current 2016-17 code was approved and reviewing the content of that meeting and the content of the discussion and really pulling from that uh, what you guys wanted to see or suggestions for seeing for improvement uh, in the future code of conduct. And so that was what was included in uh, the preparation for our, our committee meeting, which happened on August, or I'm sorry, on April 21st. Uh, so just a short, uh, here we are about a short nine months uh, from the last discussion about the code, uh, having a conversation now about 2017-18. It's great to have it a little bit earlier and get feedback from the board before we put it out to the public or public hearing uh, as to what, uh, what other changes may or may not be needed. So with that being said, the, at the, in the meeting from last August, there was a great deal of conversation um, about, uh, well, there was, a, there was, in addition to a, a, a long conversation about uh, topics that we don't need to necessarily revisit, um, the, there was, in addition, looking or looking for edits for the section on cheating and on bullying. Uh, so we, we took that into account and, and that was included in some of our changes in the code. Uh, this represents a, 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 a brief copy of changes, a summary of changes that you guys have in front of you as well. Uh, basically, there was two sections in the Code of Conduct that dealt with students' rights and responsibilities. The language is different from Board Policy 5311, which, uh, which specifically outlined bullets for students' responsibilities and, and, and rights. And so we made, the we made the Code of Conduct reflective of the Board Policy. Uh, there was a reference to Board Policy 1400, uh, which talked about uh, com community uh, uh, at, uh, community <coughs> communication in regards to uh, addressing issues. It seemed a little bit odd to have been there, and to be honest with you, it was near the top of the code. One of the comments from last August meeting was to make our code a little bit shorter. Uh, so I, 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 I propose that we take it out. The committee reviewed that change, and they approved it uh, for review by, by the board. Uh, it, it, it didn't necessarily seem relevant to the stakeholders who were actually going to receive a copy of the code. I mean, it, the policy, of course, is always relevant. But um, uh, OCR recommended that we, well, insisted that we add contact information not only for the Title IX and DASA coordinators, but also for uh, parents or students or whomever to report uh, issues to the OCR office directly. So we needed to add information as to how, uh, how, how members can get in touch with OCR. Uh, there was an updated section uh, highlighted in the draft copy of the 2017-18 Code of Conduct, highlighted on page 12 that dealt with an update and change of language for cheating. The language itself was changed uh, a little bit just to provide clarity as to you know what the expectations were, and there was a lot of conversation amongst the group uh, about you know about having, making sure that the that the classroom teacher and the building administrator had some had some leeway in dealing with uh, issues on a case by case basis. Uh, page 14, there was updated text on uh, the uh, use of cell phone electronic devices again to provide it more to provide more clarity to provide clarity on the expectations for uh, for using cell phones uh, at the discretion of uh, instruction. Uh, 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 
the discretion of classroom teachers for purposes of instruction, as well as in designated areas, uh, and to not be allowed uh, to use for, uh, uh, headphones in the hallways, for example, for, uh, for safety reasons. Uh, we looked at the language for dress code. I expected a lot of changes there. I proposed, uh, proposed a number of things from other school districts. Uh, and we went right back to the original language and we updated it to be more poignant, poignant and clear, uh, but yet you know, to provide language that wasn't so uh, opinionated to where someone might say, well, one thing is lewd or vulgar and one person's opinion may be different than that of another. We kind of took away language that would, that would allow that back and forth conversation, the yeah but conversation to ha be had. We, we took that out and just made it very plain language uh, for a couple of bullets there. And we added a paragraph uh, in the bullying section for students to report bullying because it was so uh, so correctly noted in the August 2016 meeting that while it had procedures listed for how teachers should deal with uh, incidents of bullying, it didn't have anything necessarily for students. And then the last piece worth noting that we did not have was a plain language summary that was grade specific. We put out a, a plain language summary. Well, we put out a, a put out a draft. We put out a summary of the code of conduct for parents. But what's required actually is for us to also have a student-friendly version uh, for, uh, for the code of conduct that summarizes important uh, uh, points of the code. And we drafted one for elementary and middle school, high school, which is new for 17-18. So that's, that's about it. If I can answer any questions, that'd be great. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Lo came up before we go around with board questions. Could you explain to everyone what DASA and what OCR mean? Yeah. Not everyone in the audience may know that. Right, so, so DASA, D-A-S-A, is the Dignity for All Students Act, and OCR is the Office of Civil Rights, thank you. Office of Civil Rights. Thank you. Okay. Uh, since this is just the preliminary presentation, uh, I'm going to allow one question for each board member, unless we, uh, at the end you really need to ask more. People who have questions uh, can all, both in the audience and the board, can email them uh, using the board uh, comment section. All right, first of all, Mrs. Pelt. Uh, first, I really want to thank you and the committee for all the work that's gone into this and, and the updates that are there and um, aligning it with policy. I think you've done a fantastic job and any comments I have, I will utilize email. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Slow Shower. Also want to thank you and the committee. Obviously, a lot more work went into this, and I do appreciate taking the suggestions uh, from last August, especially uh, suggestions that did come from the community on how to craft this uh, in a little better fashion. Um, I'll save the majority of my questions because we do have a uh, PBIS presentation coming up uh, at a subsequent board meeting, but I just have one uh, quick thing. We, we have a statement where it has each school in the district has uh, PBIS, a PBIS team that is charged with training students and staff and the principals of PBIS. I got a concern utilizing the word training students. Is there a way or, not a way, or is there possibly, uh, we use a different type of verbiage. Uh, to me, utilizing the word training students, when I initially see that, uh, kind, of rub, kind of rubs me the wrong page, uh, I apologize, that's page, page five. five. Uh, the first large paragraph in the middle. Possibly educating students or some other words to that effect. I, I, I don't like the word training. Okay, we, we'll make note of that. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Galetta? I have a question. Mr. Lumia? I have multiple questions, but um, First of all, on the, uh, the matrix that was provided for punishment, I will mail those particular concerns. I had those concerns last August, and I still have those concerns now. I also have, also have on, uh, on page 12. That's one question. All right. Or, or was I, it I just say, telling yeah. us that you would mail them to us? Can I think of okay. your, can I think yeah. your, your yeah. question? All, all right, if you're going to mail it, I'll let you have one brief question, all right? <laughs> 
That's right. I thought the That's process right. would be one person one and then... All right, we'll then back. we'll come we'll back. back. We'll we'll back. back. All right, this is good. I just want to clarify, I just want to um, compliment you on the quality of the language in the new parts. It's clear, concrete, specific, understandable, and therefore extremely enforceable. I also want to comment on the fact that you did write into the code of conduct um, teacher discretion, and I think that that's a really important thing to have done, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rubin. I just think that this represents an incredible amount, of, the culmination of an incredible amount of work, incredible amount of good work, and it shows. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Second question, Mr. Lumian. Oh, well, okay. I just also say I think you did a wonderful job. I know how much time and effort has been put into working on this code of conduct. and. Uh, I know the policy committee worked on so many of these issues, and uh, there were discussions between the policy committee and uh, relating it to the code of conduct, and then there was a lot of feedback that the code of conduct committee put in a great deal of work on this, and uh, thank you very much for all your efforts. Okay. Now, uh, did anyone have a second comment? Mr. Lumia. Yeah, page 12, it's a very simple wording on cheating. It says on second line, page 12, second line. It says for class assigned work or local assessments of grade and zero may be given to any student who gives or receives information, including electronically or one form on a test quiz, etc., etc., etc. Should I say it says may? Should I say shall be given? I don't, I, I'm aware of the difference. The so my question is, uh, I'd like you to think, my, my preference is just that thing. That, goes, that, that contradicts then the teacher discretion component. I, I hate to say this to you, there should be no, in, in my opinion as a former teacher, any person who cheats on any exam to get automatic zero, there should be no discretion. Cheating is cheating. I, I, don't so think, I don't think that's being negated. I think it's also the fact that as a teacher, you're still going to need a grade. Therefore, you may have a different consequence, but to see if you have attained and retained and master and or all of the things that I just mentioned, you need to get that information somehow. So providing someone a zero and now saying your life is over for this part of this whole unit and not providing the student the opportunity and the teacher discretion to be able to assess maybe in a different matter, manner. And it doesn't mean that the students could, it may be able to get a full 100, but at the same time, our first and foremost focus is to make sure that students are learning the information that they're supposed to be learning. Uh, I, I, it is important to learn information, it's also important that they know what's right and wrong. Absolutely. So in my opinion, Kid who cheats on an exam, a lot, lot, lots of that, lot, lot of exams going on during the school year besides just one exam. But if a kid cheats on an exam or plagiarizes, it seems to me that we should take drastic actions for that. I think just just to clarify, it's it's no one is negating that students have to be held responsible and accountable. But looking at exams from the perspective that it's an autopsy, let's just say. You take an exam, you get your grade, and life is over, and we move on. That's not the culture that we're trying to create in our schools. Um, assessments are formative, and they should be ongoing, and students should be, ha be given the opportunity to really work on mastering and learning information. It's not about getting a test and moving on to the next thing, but providing students with opportunity to learn information that they're responsible to learn. I'm, I'm not that or that. I think what you say is very important. I have no question about that. My question is, what do we do for a kid who cheats? That's, that's oh, all. There well, will be consequences. Well, one of the consequences is you get zero in that particular test. That's my, my philosophy, but obviously, that's got to be the, the other five people to agree with that. All right. Um, 
Mrs. Goodman? Yeah, I just, I want to respond to that as a teacher as well. And that is that, teach, that, that cheating is sometimes very hard to prove. And you can, and, and the other thing that it does is when you accuse a student of teaching, of cheating, you can damage the relationship with the student. Um, I know that I have falsely accused a student at the beginning of my career of plagiarism when he was simply a superb writer. Um, I think the other piece of that is there may be a portion of a test where there is cheating and a portion where there isn't. I think that the teacher needs to have the discretion. And, and so I thank, I thank you, Superintendent, for that observation that this addresses this, the, the component. It doesn't say the teacher can't, but there might be situations where the teacher might not want to give a zero for the whole test. And I think the teacher needs to have that flexibility. So thank you. Okay. Uh, are there any other uh, questions where, uh, let's keep it to questions rather than debate because uh, this is just the preliminary and it's, okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? All right, look, we're gonna make this the last one, Mr. Lumi, all right? There you go. On a cell phone policy, how effective are we of enforcing the use of cell phones in schools? It's a constantly moving target, is my understanding from the committee. Uh, we have many building administrators in the committee, and you know, uh, it, it's certainly it's certainly not, I would say, not possible to enforce a absolute no use policy. So, providing more clarity in the in, in where and how students are allowed or expected to to use those devices uh, provides them with at least a better foothold in, in, in managing the situation. All right. All right. All right. Any additional questions, please send them to Mr. Lokema. And, uh, may, may I just say, yes. I, want, I want to thank the committee. We had, we've had several wonderful discussions, and I do want to note that four of our committee members are here with us this evening. Uh, Jennifer Moyles, Dr. Shukat, Mr. Terrence Thomas, Th Thompson, and uh, when one of our students from, from Van Wyck, uh, Carl, fine, fine dress gentleman right there. Thank you, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you very much. Six point zero one consent agenda resolution. Does anyone wish to remove anything from the consent agenda, Mr. Slowshower? 6.03, number seven, 6.05, board report packet. What's the second one, Eddie? 6.05, board, uh, board report only. I'm sorry, look, board report for CTSE meetings only. Okay. Anyone else? Resolve that the Board of Education does hereby approve the following consent agenda items as stated. 6.02, 6.03, all except number seven, 6.04, 6.05, all except for the board report for CTSE meetings, 6.06, 6.07, 6.08, 6.09, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19, 6.20, 6.21, 6.22, 6.23, 6.24, 6.25, 6.26, 6.27, 6.28, 6.29, 6.30, 6.31, 6.32, 6.33, 6.34, 6.35, 6.36, 6.37, 6.38, 6.39, 6.40, 6.41, 6.42, 6.43, 6.44, 6.45, 6.46, 6.47, 6.48, 6.49, 6.50, 6.51, 6.52, 6.53, 6.54, 6.55, 6.56, 6.57, 6.58, 6.59, 6.60, 6.61, 6.62, 6.63, 6.64, 6.65, 6.66, 6.67, 6.68, 6.69, 6.70, 6.71, 6.72, 6.73, 6.74, 6.75, 6.76, 6.77, 6.78, 6.79, 6.80, 6.81, 6.82, 6.83, 6.84, 6.85, 6.86, 6.87, 6.88, 6.89, 6.90, 6.91, 6.92, 6.93, 6.94, 6.95, 6.96, 6.97, 6.98, 6.99, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19, 6.20, 6.21, 6.22, 6.23, 6.24, 6.25, 6.26, 6.27, 6.28, 6.29, 6.30, 6.31, 6.32, 6.33, 6.34, 6.35, 6.36, 6.37, 6.38, 6.39, 6.40, 6.41, 6.42, 6.43, 6.44, 6.45, 6.46, 6.47, 6.48, 6.49, 6.50, 6.51, 6.52, 6.53, 6.54, 6.55, 6.56, 6.57, 6.58, 6.59, 6.60, 6.61, 6.62, 6.63, 6.64, 6.65, 6.66, 6.67, 6.68, 6.69, 6.70, 6.71, 6.72, 6.73, 6.74, 6.75, 6.76, 6.77, 6.78, 6.79, 6.80, 6.81, 6.82, 6.83, 6.84, 6.85, 6.86, 6.87, 6.88, 6.89, 6.90, 6.91, 6.92, 6.93, 6.94, 6.95, 6.96, 6.97, 6.98, 6.99, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19, 6.20, 6.21, 6.22, 6.23, 6.24, 6.25, 6.26, 6.27, 6.28, 6.29, 6.30, 6.31, 6.32, 6.33, 6.34, 6.35, 6.36, 6.37, 6.38, 6.39, 6.40, 6.41, 6.42, 6.43, 6.44, 6.45, 6.46, 6.47, 6.48, 6.49, 6.50, 6.51, 6.52, 6.53, 6.54, 6.55, 6.56, 6.57, 6.58, 6.59, 6.60, 6.61, 6.62, 6.63, 6.64, 6.65, 6.66, 6.67, 6.68, 6.69, 6.70, 6.71, 6.72, 6.73, 6.74, 6.75, 6.76, 6.77, 6.78, 6.79, 6.80, 6.81, 6.82, 6.83, 6.84, 6.85, 6.86, 6.87, 6.88, 6.89, 6.90, 6.91, 6.92, 6.93, 6.94, 6.95, 6.96, 6.97, 6.98, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99, 6.99,
excuse yeah. me, folks. 6.03, resolved that the reading of the teaching and administrative personnel list be waived and the retirement leaves of action, tenure appointments, affiliation agreement, certified substitute teacher appointment, and uncertified substitute teacher appointment be approved as recommended by the superintendent for number seven only. Okay, do we have a motion? Mr. Galetta, second. Mr. Lumia, discussion. Mr. Soschauer? No discussion. Oh. All right, all, all those in favor? Unanimous. Oh, no, sorry, all except one. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was Mrs. Pelton, Mr. Galetta, Mr. Lumia, Mrs. Goodman, Mr. Rubin, Mrs. Kelland. Opposed? Mr. Soschauer. 6.05, board report for CPEF. Oh, okay. 6.05, resolve that the Board of Education does hereby approve the CSE, CPSE recommendations dated May 1st, May 3rd, May 4th, and May 5th, and we're talking here only about the board report for CTSE meeting. Do we have a motion? Mrs. Pelton, second. Mrs. Goodman, discussion. Mr. Slowshower. Good evening, Ms. Bizzo. During the uh, presentation you had given on uh, the Special Education Department, I do not recall any uh, information or discussion with regards to preschool education. Correct. I was wondering if you could just uh, uh, explain to the board and sure. more so to myself, uh, who participates on this committee and what is the process uh, in determining uh, for preschool? Sure. Uh, obviously kids that are going to be needed of special uh, services once they enroll uh, the following year into the school district. Yeah, stu um, and students, um, once again preschool students who are soon to be enrolled in district level buildings, kindergarten classes, um, classified as students with preschool edu um, special education needs. Uh, we have two uh, CPSC chairs, Ms. Bridget Lander and Carolyn Ryan here. They, they chair the meetings of the district, and usually in attendance for students who are transitioning in would be the current service providers for preschool services, so it could be the voters first, as the services, you know, uh, people, people such as that, and plus the incoming team. Um, so once again, the purpose of CPSC is to identify students prior to coming to school who may be at, at need of special education services so we can plan accordingly. And as they have those, those transition meetings, the, committees, the, committees, uh, the process of the committees is to determine A, continued eligibility because the, that, that all change is coming into school, and, and B, should they stay uh, eligible for services, what is it that they would be entitled to in school? So pretty much it's got school representatives, parents, and then obviously all the preschool providers. They talk about um, level of progress at the preschool setting, be it just each OTPT and do us a, a small uh, program. And then the whole goal is to simply match them with what Wapen News offers at the kindergarten level. And as they transition in, many students who get related services in preschool stage of speech typically might come in and get declassified. They may not they, they may not need speech or they may simply need it as a related service. They may get that, that through AIS. Some students receive a full program, half day a full day program. And then other students who might transition in to ICT and or self contained class. So it's a combination of district representatives and preschool service providers who know the students best. So they know the students, we know the system and the program. We try to meet in the middle and then bring them into uh, school age kindergarten classes. Okay, thank you. Um, just a quick follow up since we're trying to move into the new, into the new school year for all schools. Mm -hmm to offer the services that are needed. So in prior presentations yep. by the superintendent and yourself, we don't have kids on the bus back and forth throughout right. the district. Right. Um, for those parents and meetings that we have been conducting so far, mm -hmm. have we made those incoming, potentially incoming students aware that this is what the plan is for September, or are we not yet at that point where We've certain had students some preliminary, may have to be transferred yeah, we've to had some other schools for services? Conversations letting parents know that there's a, there's a plan to potentially, once again, keep people in their home districts, you know, home uh, buildings. 
Um, so we planted that seed, let him, uh, obviously let people know that there are things that to have to happen in order to make that a uh, reality. It's so it's, uh, so it's seeds have been planted, clearly once that becomes a factor, then we can move in that direction. But most of the students are in fact going to come back to their home building anyway. Thank you, I appreciate the uh, explanation of that. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. 7.01, approval of the revised 2017-2018 school calendar. Do we have a motion? Very happy not to read this. <laughs> Whereas the Board of Education adopted the 2017-2018 school calendar at the meeting of March 2017. No, no, it's the recommended action before we have the motion. Yes, read it. Okay. Now let me start over again. Whereas the Board of Education adopted the 2017-2018 school calendar at the meeting of March 27, 2017, and whereas it has now been determined that the calendar requires revision, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education does hereby approve the resolved 2017-2018 school calendar as stated. Okay. Okay. The Monday, November 20, 2017, parent-teacher conference day has been moved to Monday, November 27, 2017. Okay. Do we have a motion? Mrs. Pelton, second. Mr. Slowshower, discussion. All those in favor? Unanimous. 8.01, approval of representative to serve as a member of the countywide shared services panel. Resolved that the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District does hereby designate Kristen Crandall, Executive Director of Finance and Business Development, to serve as a representative on the countywide shared services panel as recommended by the Superintendent of Schools. Do we have a motion? Mr. Galetta, second. Mrs. Goodman, discussion. Mr. Rubin. I would like to say that I believe that Mrs. Crandall is well qualified for this that this is, this is a result of something that the Board of Education has, has uh, been asked to do uh, as a result of uh, legislation from the recent state budget, I believe, that was handed down to the county executive. And this is a, something that the county executive is formulating as a result of that school budget. We are well represented with her. Any other comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor? Unanimous. 8.02, Approval of State Environmental Quality Review Act, Type 2 Action. Oh, okay. Where is the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District, parentheses Board of Education or District, is proposing to implement energy conservation measures at all district facilities, parentheses project, end of parentheses, on an energy performance contract basis and whereas said improvements are subject to classification under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CEQRA, and whereas the proposed project constitutes a replacement, rehabilitation, or reconstruction of a structure or facility in kind on the same site, including upgrading buildings to meet building or fire codes, which are classified as a type two action under the current Department of Environmental Conservation secret regulations, which is section 6 NYCRR 617.5, parentheses C, parentheses 2, and whereas under secret type 2 actions are declared as actions that have no significant impact on the environment and require no further review under secret and whereas the Board of Education, as the only involved agency, has examined all of the information related to the project, including the recommendation of the district's consultant engineered solutions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education 
based upon the record before it, including the general, specific, and detailed knowledge of the uh, board of the proposed project and under the applicable standards of CEQA and 6 NYCRR Part 617.5, hereby determines that A, the proposed project is classified as a Type 2 action, and B, in accordance with Article 8 of the New York State Environmental Conservation Law, the board is uh, precluded from further environmental review and be it further resolved that the Board of Education hereby shall forward an official copy of this resolution to the New York State Education Department together with a copy of the correspondence from the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Resort Preservation in connection with its request for approval of the project from the New York State Education Department. Do we have a motion? Mrs. Pelton. Second, Mr. Lumia. Discussion. All those in favor? Unanimous. 8.03, approval of Amoresco for energy performance contract. Whereas on May 8, 2017, the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District, parentheses, District of Board of Education, issued requests for proposals from energy services companies for the design and implementation of energy con conservation measures at all district facilities, parentheses, project, end of parentheses, on an on a energy performance contract basis, and whereas the district received one proposal in response to the request for proposals, which were opened by the district on April 19, 2017, and whereas the district's administration in consultation with its engineer, engineered solutions, reviewed and evaluated the proposals from the energy services companies and accompanying energy audits to determine which proposal for energy efficient capital improvements identified realistic, comprehensive energy efficient technologies, thereby reducing the district's energy consumption and generating cost savings to the district and whereas based upon said review and evaluation of the proposals and accompanying audits, the district's administration and engineered solutions recommends that the Board of Education appoint Amoresco Incorporated as the district's energy performance contractor. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District based upon the RFP dated April 19, 2017 and Amoresco's response dated April 19, 2017, be it further resolved that the Board of Education authorizes the Board President to execute an energy performance contract between the district and Amoresco subject to, one, the completion and acceptance of the comprehensive, comprehensive energy audit, and two, the negotiation of a mutually agreeable formal written agreement as recommended by the district's council and approved by the State Education Department of the maximum allowable amount of state building and permissible uh, state building and permi uh, state yes. a permissible thank you for such energy performance contract. Do we have a motion, Mrs. Pelton? Second, Mr. Slowshower. Discussion, Mr. Lumia. I'd like to make a comment that Amoresco has done work for us in the past and has done saved us a great deal of money. So um, this is an excellent, excellent company and uh, we're looking forward to all the savings that they provide for us. All those in favor? Unanimous. 8.04, approval of security vestibule project secret type two action. Where is the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District, parentheses, district or board, proposes to install framing and glazing systems doors and related equipment and apparatus to create 13 security vestibules throughout its 13 school district as a part of its Smart Schools Bond Act investment plan, parentheses project. And where the proposed project is a routine activity of the district and or the replacement, rehabilitation, or reconstruction of an existing facility 
that qualifies as a Type 2 accident set forth in 6 NYC RR Part 617.5 State Environmental Quality Review Act, CEQA, whereas the proposed dis uh, project includes no other potential involved agencies that have been identified in regards to the project, and whereas the board has considered the information and documentation which describes the design and intent of the proposed project. Now, therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Wapenger Central School District, based upon the record before it, including the general, specific, and detailed knowledge of the board of the proposed project and under the applicable standards of CEQA and knowledge of the board of, it, of, of, the, board of the proposed project <coughs> and under the applicable standards of CEQA, based upon the record before it, including the general specific and detailed knowledge of the board of the proposed project and under the applicable standards of CEQA and 6 NYC RR Part 617.5, thereby determines that A, the proposed project is classified as a type two action and B, in accordance with Article 8 of New York State Environmental Conservation Law, the board is not obligated to conduct any further environmental review of the project. Do we have a motion? Mrs. Pelton, second. Mrs. Goodman, discussion. Mr. Lumia. I'd like to make a comment on May. On May 3rd, uh, the Capital Improvement Committee, so there's a slash out of myself, uh, Ms. Bay Kellen, and Mr. Rubin. Uh, the presentation was given by Mr. Phil Zemke regarding all the vestibules and uh, the detailed plan. Uh, they were quite quite extensive and uh, we're looking forward to its completion. They're presently being sent to uh, the State Department for approval, the State Department, New York State, <laughs> for approval. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Rubin. And I think he said we, they were somewhere like five to six or seven months back in, in terms of... Uh, six, six to eight months. Six to eight months. So they will be completed after we get uh, approval and can put it out to bid, which we hope will be soon, and that they can start working on them uh, a year from now. Okay. <laughs> I know it seems crazy, but that's how long these things take. <laughs> right. Okay. I guess they're understaffed up at the Department of Educa Education. All right. Uh, any other questions, comments? All those in favor? Unanimous. 8.05, approval of 2017-2018 tax anticipation note. A resolution delegating to the President of the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District, Dutchess and Putnam Counties, New York, the power to authorize the issuance of and to sell not to exceed $6,500,000 tax anticipation notes of said school district in anticipation of the collection of taxes leaving or to be leaving for the fiscal year of said school district commencing July 1, 2017. Be it resolved by the Board of Education of the Wappinger Central School District, Dutchess and Putnam Counties, New York, as follows. Section one, subject to the provisions of the local finance law, the power to authorize the issuance of and to sell not to exceed $6,500,000 tax anticipation notes of the Wappinger Central School District, Dutchess and Putnam Counties, New York, including renewals thereof in anticipation of the collection of taxes levied uh, or to be levied for the fiscal year of said school district commencing July 1, 2017 is hereby delegated to the President of the Board of Education. Such notes shall be of such terms, form, and content, and shall be sold in such manner as may be prescribed by said President of the Board of Education, consistent with the, with the provisions of the Local Finance Law section, section 2, excuse me, section 2. This resolution shall take effect immediately. Do we have a motion? Mr. Slowshower, second. Mrs. Pelton, uh, discussion. Mr. Rubin. Not a discussion so much as a question. Um, perhaps it would be 
Can you give us, uh, Mr. Superintendent, an explanation as to why we have to do these things? Uh, because I'm sure they don't come without cost. Uh, so I think that we have to, I know we have to do it. Yeah. We have to do it. But it's a situation that's beyond our control. And maybe you could explain that a bit. Yes. OK. Uh, so the reason why these need to be uh, a tax anticipation note would be needed. The, even though we operate a school year from 7-1 to 6-30, not all of the state aid for that school year is received during that span of time. So at the end of June 30th, we'll have a state aid receivable and a federal receivable that's sizable. So as we build our budget, we build our budgets based on 100% state aid because we do receive it, but it's the timing of that money and the timing of those tax payments when they come in in September, that is why these are necessary. Uh, does the state government benefit from the float, from not paying them on time? It's their, it's their payment schedule, so they may very well. I do not know the answer to that. <laughs> Thank just, you. Just a quick question, Ms. Randall. I realize that we have to do this because of anticipation of taxes. Why is it, and just a question that perhaps I should ask, but why do we use the, why do we use the fund balance so until we get the money and then just pay back the fund balance. Because it's cash and there's cash payments that need to be made. We need to make payments for payroll. We need to make payments for I'm last year. That, what can we use the fund balance? Because fund balance, is not, it's fund balance is a balancing item. It's not cash in your hand. When you're paid in full for everything, remember we used a modified accrual accounting basis. So we have to book receivables, which means we say we haven't received the cash yet, but we're going to get it. So when you do that, you don't have your cash in your hand, but you've stated your revenues. You've said, I'm going to receive this money. I just haven't received it yet. So that means you don't have the cash in your hand to make those payments <laughs> like payroll and the end of year payments for your accounts payable. And you have to wait till that cash comes in your hand and then you recognize it. Modified accrual accounting basis. It's what we're mandated to do. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. 9.01. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Mr. Rubin. Not an amendment, it's uh, a comment, and if it's an inappropriate time, please let me know. Excuse me. No, I just, I wanted to uh, just mention the Arts in the Park this weekend. And uh, this on Sunday, and I'd also like to commend you. Saturday, Saturday, unless it rains, in which case okay. it's Sunday. And I'd also, and I think it's Saturday evening that Gayhead. I think it's Saturday evening that Gayhead is going to be receiving an award from the American Heart Association and the Poughkeepsie Clan Hotel. Kudos mm -hmm. to them. Thank you, Mr. Rubin, for sharing that information with everyone. Okay. okay. 10.01, comments from the public. At this time, anyone may speak following the same rules as before, but this time it may be about anything that has to do with the business of the school district, even if it was not on the agenda for this evening. Good evening, board and superintendent. I don't have the list in front of me, but I can't name names any, but I'd like to thank or congratulate, I'm sorry, my assistant principal on her tenure and everybody else on their tenure and my retirement list tonight. Um, I would like to thank Darren. Um, I did think that was great committee work and more non-opinion and kind of what I think that meant for a lot of that code, code of conduct and it's very, very appreciated. Um, while I was sitting here tonight, I heard a question being asked and an answer being given. And in my experience as a special ed parent, I'm not really sure that the seeds being planted are effective. Um, and I would like to know if it's gonna be transportation or district policy, if buildings do change unexpectedly, since transportation requests were due April 1st, if there will be any consideration taken if your building does change via program unexpectedly. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at this time? Okay. Seeing no one, 
Could we have a motion for adjourn to adjourn? Mrs. Pelton, second. Mr. Lumia, all those in favor? Unanimous.